How many quarterbacks will go in the first round? Will a team like the Vikings or Falcons trade up to acquire one? And just what teams don't have first round picks? Let's talk about that. What is going on guys? This is Wade here with Tungs Cat Sports and today we're going to be going over my first round uh, mock draft that I think the NFL is going to adhere by. Obviously, I am a wizard and every single one of these picks will get taken in that order. Obviously, as I know exactly what I'm talking about and not just some random scrub who lives in Texas. Uh, but otherwise, let's kick it off. The NFL Draft kicks off this Thursday, April 27th at 7 p.m. Central for uh, those of you who live in my time zone. Um, the This is just going to be the first round, just picks 1 through 32. Also, as you can see, we've got three teams up on the screen, the Panthers, the Cleveland Browns, and Houston Texans. Those are the three teams, as of now, since recording this, that do not currently have a first round pick as the Panthers traded away um, to the Bears last year. The Cleveland Browns, that was in the Deshaun Watson trade, and then the Texans, of course, they traded it earlier in the year with the Minnesota Vikings. So without further ado, let's get into the first eight selections. As you can see, we've got one through eight up on the board. We've got Caleb Williams going number one overall to the Chicago Bears. This is pretty much a done deal. Justin Fields is gone. He's with the Pittsburgh Steelers now. Uh, so Caleb Williams to the Bears is pretty much what is going to happen. Whether you like him or not, whether you believe he's a game changer or not, um, the Bears seem to sure think they do. Moving on to pick number two by the Commanders. There's a lot of talk between Drake May and Jaden Daniels. I personally think the Commanders will go with Jaden Daniels. I think he fits their scheme better. I think he um, just has a little bit higher upside, which I think the commanders like. So that's what I've got. At number three, the New England Patriots. There's a lot of talk that the Patriots might be trying to trade down. I don't think that happens. I think they take Drake May and see what they've got with him. The, the Patriots, they need a lot of help. Will Drake May succeed? I don't know. He reminds me of a of a little bit better value um, of Mitch Trubisky, but there, there's a lot of hype. He he has all the the athleticism, he's got the height, he's got the weight that you want of a star quarterback, but um, he just didn't, he just didn't do it for me in college, but you know, maybe the Patriots will like that. And then at number four with the Minnesota Vikings, this is where the Arizona Cardinals will normally pick. I do think the Vikings and the Cardinals get a trade going. And the Vikings are going to take none other than quarterback J.J. McCarthy. There's a lot of talk with the Vikings wanting to get one of these top quarterbacks. I think J.J. McCarthy makes the most sense for them. Um, again, I, I don't really know if any of these quarterbacks are really going to be um, game changers as even Caleb Williams, even though he's been locked in as the number one pick for probably the past two years now. Um, there's just a number of red flags with these guys, but that is what I have going in there for your top four selections. And if I'm the Cardinals, I definitely do try to trade down, um, try, try to get more picks. You already have your quarterback and Kyler Murray, at least you think you do. So the best thing for the Cardinals right now is to just keep gathering draft picks. Uh, as we see, we got number five, the Los Angeles Chargers. I have them taking Marvin Harrison Jr., who I think is the best wide receiver prospect in this draft, as a lot of others do as well. I think he makes the most sense. The Chargers traded away um, Mike Williams and uh, Keenan Allen this past season. So they have absolutely no wide receivers. So they have to get one if they think they want to be competitive, and if they want to give Justin Herbert a chance. Number six, I've got another wide receiver going off the board, Malik Neighbors. Um, you should probably see these guys pretty much go back-to-back. -back. I'd be really surprised if there's a big jump in between. 
uh, these two wide receivers as they are pretty much 1A and 1B. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the size with Marvin Harrison or do you prefer this B with Malik Neighbors, the separation with Malik Neighbors? Um, so it really just depends on, on what you, you want. And I think the Giants, they need to go wide receiver because can anyone tell me who is a wide receiver for the New York Giants? No, because nobody knows any wide receivers on the New York Giants. So Malik Neighbors makes the most sense. Um, last time they took an LSU wide receiver, he turned out pretty good, Odell Beckham. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And then to finish us off at seven and eight, Seven Tennessee Titans, nothing special. Taking Joe Alt, one of the best offensive tackles in this year's draft. Uh, he is going to be holding down that offensive line for the Titans for a long time. And whatever team he actually does go to, he looks like he's got all the, the makings for a great left tackle. Um, and then to finish us off, Terry and Arnold, cornerback from Alabama for the Atlanta Falcons. There's a lot of talk about the Falcons possibly trading up to acquire a quarterback. Again, that's also possible here. I, if I'm the, the um, Falcons, I'm running with Kirk Cousins, just seeing what we get in the next year or two before we really worry about any quarterbacks, especially in this draft. Now let's move on to picks 9 through 16. So as we see, we've got the Bears once again, as the Bears do have two top 10 selections, which is absolutely crazy. And for me, I had them pretty much going what the Texans did last year, taking a awesome quarterback and then getting one of the top defensive linemen in this year's draft in Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Next, we got the New York football giants, and I do have them acquiring Brock Bowers. I think he projects exactly what Aaron Rodgers is wanting to do this year. Um, he's one of the best tight ends. Uh, prospects in the past decade and I, I think he just makes the most sense give the Jets another awesome pass catcher for Aaron Rodgers as y'all are all in on Rodgers so you might as well keep him happy next the Cardinals as uh, you can see this is where the Vikings would normally be picking but I do had them in a trade so they are getting a wide receiver they pass up on Marvin Harrison uh, move down they get whatever in the draft and they're able to get Rome Adunze who is another awesome wide receiver I do think he's a tier below Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison but he will be awesome and I think he and um, Kyler Murray will have a great uh, tandem next we have the Denver Broncos acquiring Jared Verse uh, he's also one of the top defensive linemen in this draft you could see Jared Verse go a little bit before Dallas Turner or vice versa but I do think Dallas Turner gets that edge, <laughs> edge, um, and then Jared Verse do, does go a few picks later. Next, we've got the Raiders. They're taking an offensive tackle. The Raiders, they need a lot. Best thing right now for them is to shore up that offensive line, focus on the run game, and try to protect um, Gardner Minshew and let him kind of be like Alex Smith, just, just a game manager. And then I have the Saints also taking an offensive tackle. Um, out of Oregon State. The Saints, they love taking their offensive linemen um, to try to keep that run game, keep Alvin Kamara happy. At 15, we have the Colts taking Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. He's awesome. He's going to do great. And then finally, uh, at the midway point, we have Byron Murphy, defensive lineman out of Texas, going to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, he's a great big pass disruptor. Um, he fits into the Seahawks with, with Dan Quinn over there. And I think uh, a lot of Seahawks fans will be happy. Next, we have 17 through 24. So we're now getting to the back half of the draft. The Jaguars, they're taking uh, defensive edge out of UCLA. He's going to be great trying to disrupt uh, the offensive line of those division foes with Anthony Richardson with the Colts and CJ Stroud with the Texans. They definitely need to... Um, get some pass disruptors and being able to pair him with Josh Allen will be great for the Jaguars. Next, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. They're taking an offensive lineman, Troy Fautanu, um, so that they are able to solidify Joe Burrow as Burrow has now been injured 
what, three of, of the last five years. The Minkles need to do everything they can to try to protect their star quarterback and Joe Burrow. At 19, we had the Los Angeles Rams grabbing a defensive lineman, Demarion Robinson. Um, he'll be great. He's going to be awesome for them. They just lost Aaron Donald. So being able to um, get a defensive lineman to try to fill the shoes of Aaron Donald, which is going to be nearly impossible, but at least they are able to get a good start. At pick 20, we have another LSU wide receiver going off the board and Brian Thomas Jr. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. As you know, Deontay Johnson, their star wide receiver, got traded to the Carolina Panthers, so they got George Pickens. So they do have a hole there. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields uh, will be taking over the quarterback helm. So they need another wide receiver for sure uh, to try to protect them. Next, we've got Miami Dolphins taking J.C. Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama, uh, giving Tua another protector as uh, Tua's got tons of weapons in Tyreek Hill, Raheem Mostert, um, Devin Chain, and Jalen Waddle. So being able to protect that offensive line, keep Tua healthy, give him plenty of time to throw the ball and let those awesome offensive playmakers uh, get separation, that is exactly what the Dolphins need. The Philadelphia Eagles, I got them taking Cooper DeGene, cornerback out of Iowa. Um, we could see Cooper go a little bit earlier than pick 22, but if the Eagles are able to get this guy, better watch out. The Eagles, this is he fits exactly what scheme they need, what scheme they want, and he should be awesome being able to uh, lock down the Cowboys and the Commanders and New York Giants uh, wide receivers. Next, we've got pick 23 in the Minnesota Vikings taking Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. Um, again, the Vikings, they just need to keep acquiring as much talent as they can. Um, so Nate Wiggins, he fixed that mold. And then I do have the Cowboys at pick 24 taking a wide receiver, but not the wide receiver that most people think. Uh, usually, Adnai Mitchell, you could look at him and he's got a little bit of the better stats. But I think Jerry Jones goes a little bit bonkers with Xavier Work Worthy breaking the combine record in the 40-yard dash. And he can't get over that. So that's why I do have Xavier Worthy going over his counterpart, uh, Adnan Mitchell, because Worthy broke the 40-yard record, 40-yard dash record. And I think Jerry Jones just can't get over that. He wants to give Dak another playmaker as this is... Oh boy, this is getting into icy territory with Dak as he's getting really close to to uh, running out of time here in Dallas. So if Jerry Jones really wants to maximize Dak's potential, get him a star wide receiver and let's see where we can go from there. And finally, we have our final eight selections of the draft. I have the Packers taking Amarius Mims, offensive lineman out of Georgia. Uh, Jordan Love, he did absolutely awesome last year. Uh, he really showcased just what type of talent he is. They have a ton of awesome young wide receivers. Uh, the defense is looking good. So being able to continue to protect Jordan Love is exactly what the Packers need to do. The Buccaneers, I had them taking Darius Robinson, defensive lineman out of Missouri, as another guy to help disrupt um and, and create havoc on that offensive line or defensive line with V to V. The Cardinals here at pick 27. This is where the Texans drew, uh, traded away their pick the previous year. Had them taken the offensive lineman and Jackson Powers Johnson. Being able to protect Kyler Murray is a must. Giving him time in the pocket is a must. So I think this is what the Cardinals go to. And then our final five picks, the Buffalo Bills. Here is Adnai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy's teammate. Uh, as you know, the Bills traded away Stephon Diggs. Gabe Davis isn't on the team anymore. Can anyone tell me the Bills' number one wide receiver? No, you can't because they don't have any. Um, so Adnai Mitchell will be taking over the, the helm of Stephon Diggs and seeing what Josh Allen can do. Next, I've got the Lions taking a uh, awesome name here in Kool-Aid McKintree out of Alabama. 
defensive uh, back as he's going to help. And then here I have a trade as the Baltimore Ravens. I have them trading out of the first round with the Denver Broncos. And the Denver Broncos are taking Bo Nix here at pick 30. Quarterback out of Oregon. They're replacing Russell Wilson with, with uh, Bo. And we'll see what they can do. Uh, the Broncos, I think this makes the most sense. They want to take a, a shot, see what they can out of Bo Nix. And if he if he's awesome in two years, then great. If he's not, then uh, they'll, they'll take another quarterback. But Bo Nix, I think he goes here to the Denver Broncos. At pick 31, the 49ers, I have them taking Tyler Guyton. Offensive lineman out of Oklahoma, helping shore up that offensive line with um, to protect Brock Purdy. Now, there is a lot of talk about Debo, Samuel, and Brandon Ayuk. Um, one of those guys could be on the move here. If Ayuk or Samuel gets traded, then you could see um, the 49ers take a wide receiver here. But I don't think, I don't think they're going to get traded. So I do see the 49ers taking off the offensive lineman. And then finally, to round us out, at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs taking wide receiver out of Georgia, Lad McConkey. If you've seen the news out of Kansas City, Rashi Rice, he could be in a lot of trouble um, there in Dallas uh, with what he did. So they are definitely needing another wide receiver. Whether, whether he gets in trouble or not, they need another wide receiver. Travis Kelsey, he's getting older. Rushy Rice, he did really great as a rookie. Um, but there was definitely times where Mahomes just could not move the ball as there was absolutely zero separation between his, his pass catchers. So being able to get Mahomes an awesome target, getting him this late in the first round, I think will absolutely set them up for success. And there you have it. That is what I have going for the... Um, first round of the 2024 NFL draft. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Um, how accurate do you think this will be? Do you see any more quarterbacks going? Do you see less quarterbacks going? Uh, let me know your thoughts and we will come back and do a recap of the first round uh, over the next uh, week or two. This has been Wade with Tungscat Sports. Thank you very much and goodbye.